Okay, ladies and gentlemen, maybe, maybe it's time that uh, we just start. Um, for, the, for the record, for the, for the introduction, my name is Tomasz. I come from the Successful uh, Entrepreneur Institute. This is my company, it's a consulting company. And I wake up every day just to, with a mission to help people who have uh, business ideas uh, and they want to make them reality. So I help people who have, uh, uh, who have a, a wish that they built uh, their company. I help them. So maybe if you, if you are the same, so you have a business idea, uh, you are more than welcome to, um, maybe to write me. I will give you email in the end, or maybe you call me, or maybe you can participate in other webinars like this one. So uh, this is my background. I'm a business consultant uh, and I help people all over Slovenia uh, to realize their business ideas. And one of the, let's say, key elements of every business is, uh, um, let's say, business planning and the lean innovation method methodology, which is the subject of today's webinar, is, I think, one of the key, key bricks of the building your company. And it's quite a new approach. Um, let's say, um, easy to say, the Lean Innovation Methodology is a tool that will help you design your business ideas from, from ideas that, uh, they're, that, that you are in love with to the business ideas which also um, your customers love. Because, you know, uh, maybe I just start with the, the, with the first... With the first um, with the first slide, you know, uh, very often it's, uh, let's say, very often uh, path to success of every businessman is that uh, uh, in a lot of times people um, in their garages, uh, let's say, uh, build uh, their, their businesses in a base of ideas that nobody wants. That means that uh, you, have, you have your business idea, you are very in love with it. And it's, uh, you know, you, you can't stop thinking about it, but you are the only person in the world who really loves this idea. And when you build it and when you make it and when you try to sell it, nobody wants to buy it. You know, this is, I think, very common. Statistic says that nine times of 10 happens just that. So uh, nine times, nine times of 10 times, uh, uh, businessmen are building their ideas in their garage and these ideas are just, just for them because nobody wants them. And that means that, uh, of course, innovators all over the world try, trying to, they, they tried in the past, figure it out how to design ideas that uh, also customers want. And this is my first slide about, so from, from fat to lean innovation, because if we are talking today about lean innovation, maybe it's good to explain you how the fat innovation uh, works. Let's say the fat, fat innovation or fat business planning, it was uh, performed uh, till, the, till the economic crisis in 2008. And fat, uh, fat business designing, it's meant like this, I explained before. So you, you get an idea, let's say in 2005, it was like that, that you, you get a very good idea, you, you, you thought that you have a good idea, and then you lock yourself in garage, you borrow money from the bank, from your relatives, you uh, borrow from yourself, so you, you, you invest also your savings, and then you, you build your, your product, let's say for two years, and then after two years, you put this product on the market, and the market or the customer say, oh, this is a very bad idea, I don't want this. And like I said, nine times of 10, it happens like this. So, uh, I, and I named this process the FAT innovation. And then the economic crisis came. And of course, uh, there was a lack of money, lack of, lack of investment money. So uh, the innovators all over the world trying to figure it out how to design business ideas with the, with the lower investments. And then they, they let's say, um, design the lean innovation process. And uh, this, is, this is the subject of today's webinar. I will tell you now about lean innovation process or, or lean innovation design of business or project ideas. And uh, 
it's um, let's say that it's based on the on the belief that if you really want to build very good company or if you really want to design a very good project uh you 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 should not lock yourself in garage and just spend money and uh, have a feeling that you are the greatest businessman but you must start uh, from the scratch from the beginning uh, to in include your potential customers to the process of designing so if i say before you lock yourself a garage the lean innovation methodology says don't lock yourself into the garage but you invite the potential customers in your garage and you build your uh, your products and services and projects with them and today i will show you how how to do the, how to do it okay let's go to another slide so the lean innovation method methodology consists out of two golden rules and four four steps and i will explain you everything in these two let's say one and a half hour so uh, at first uh, uh, golden rule number one the golden rule number one of lean innovation methodology is fall in love with the problems you are trying to solve your users or maybe your potential clients and don't fall in love with your business idea or the project because very often people get an idea they fall in love with and this is the you know this is the this is the situation in which you lock yourself in the garage and uh, don't let anybody bothers you because you think that your your idea is the best but it often it isn't so of course this is not good way so if you must fall in love and of course you must fall in love in something because the uh, falling in love in uh, in business ideas uh, produce the passion and you need passion if you want to build your company so i suggest you with the golden rule number one fall in love with the problems you're trying to solve uh, what is that all about i will explain you every project or every product or every service is uh, bought by the people by the by the um, by the customers because it solves them a problem or maybe satisfied a need so that means that means um, that uh, uh, you, you like successful entrepreneur you must understand this so it's not enough just to give people the the your idea but you must understand why they are buying it or why they are using it so that means that everything which we buy or which we get involved in everything solves us a certain problem or maybe solves uh, uh, or maybe satisfied uh, one our need let's say if you want we, if we if we want to buy a sandwich we don't buy sandwich just because it looks good or something but because we are hungry and the hunger is one of our basic human needs and that's why we buy food because it it satisfies our need or maybe if i explain in another case let's say car car is a thing that helps us to come from the point e to pay point b faster before the cars we have a course and then uh, <coughs> mr henry ford uh, just uh, just came to an idea okay what if we have some things with the four wheels that will be faster than horse and then he like with the car he solves us a problem get from the point a to point b fast faster let's say than horse and this is the point of uh, the the golden rule of lean innovation so think about the problems think about the problems you are trying to solve not fall in love in your ideas because if you if you will fall in love in the in the problems you will uh, have no problem let's say if you fall in love with problems you will have no problem to offer a new uh, let's say new um, new ideas to the market because you will understand your customers you will know what are the biggest problems what are the biggest needs in their life and you will never get out of new ideas because if you fall in love with your business idea that means that uh, in some in some time also if, if the business idea is very good um it, in some time uh, people get used to it and they will not buy and then you have a problem what to what to offer next but if you will understand your problems of your customers this will not happen because you will you will know their environment you will know what they are desires what they wish what uh, what are the biggest fears and problems in their life and you will also 
and you will always come with uh, some new ideas to, uh, to implement and to offer them. So this is the first golden rule. Fall in love with the problems you are trying to solve and not in your business ideas. And the next, the second golden, golden rule of uh, lean innovation methodology is, uh, like I said before, include your potential uh, customers or users in the early stage product development. That means that it's forbidden to lock yourself in garage, building things that nobody wants. Like I said before, statistics said that nine times of 10 people who are building their company doing just that because they think that they are the greatest, that they have the best idea. They lock themselves in garage and they don't ask anybody about anything. And this is very wrong. And the golden rule number two of lead innovation, include your potential clients, ask them, test them, uh, make interviews with them. I will explain you later how to talk to them and how to make interviews and how to ask them properly that you will get information you need. So the golden rule number two, include your potential customers in early stage. That means that you are building your products on the market or with the other words set, maybe just invite them to your garage and building your products together because it's the only way to succeed because you will not do or build things that nobody wants because they will tell you at the start, okay, this is not a good idea. But if you do like this and this and this, this could be very suitable for me and I will buy it. And this is the conversation. This is the communication between you and the, the potential customers. And it's worth it a fortune because you are not building stuff that you think that this is good, but people tell you what is good for them and what will solve their problems and what will they, they were they were willing to uh, to exchange money for for that thing so they they buy okay this is the golden rule number two let's go further now i will explain you now also the four steps of lean innovation and the first step is that you build your business model maybe just a short uh, a short information for you i will go now just for four steps i will explain you a little bit about every step and then i will go back and explain you more detailed. So the first, just four steps that you will you will get an idea what 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 to expect, and then I will go back and explain um, and explain a little bit uh, uh, detailed about what to do in every step. Okay. So the first the first step is design your first draft of your business model. Business model is this uh, is this uh, spreadsheet you see here below. This uh, is uh, like easily, uh, easily said that this is the, your business plan in one page. So that means that you have an idea and you think on this idea from nine different perspectives be because you see that uh, there is a nine different, uh, there is a nine different uh, sections, let's say, of this business plan. So this is the first step. You make a business plan in one page. So very quick, very simple. I think you, for, for the majority of ideas, you, you need just one hour, maybe, yeah, one hour, one hour and a half, and you have very good this idea. So you don't stuck in your office for like half a month and just, just uh, write your business plan because this is a waste of time. You just, uh, you just make or design this one in one page and it took you maybe one hour and a half and you, and you have complete the, of course, it's a first draft. But for the first step, you, you just need your draft. And I will explain later what to put in some sections. Let's go to the step two. So in step two, you explore and analyze the problem. Because I said you before, don't fall in love on your idea, but fall in love uh, in the problems you are trying to solve to your customers. And it often, it often happens that the, the person who are trying to build their companies they think that they, uh, the, the, the customers have some kind of problems, but when they go out and, and ask them and make interviews with them, they figure it out that the problems are not like they seem to be. So they, they figure it out that the, the, the people, their potential clients have the different, different problems. 
And we, we step, step two is made by interviewing people, interviewing your potential clients. And this we make in step two. So we are going out of the building, find our potential clients, and we are, we are making interviews with them. These interviews are problem interviews, uh, which have a goal that we try to, to figure it out if there is really problems that we are trying to solve. Or maybe if the potential clients really have these kind of problems, we thought that they have. And uh, I will tell you, I, in, I have workshops about this lean innovation. Uh, I think 1,000 people came already on, the, on several workshops, and I never met any, any person which uh, figured it out for the first time the problems. So it always happened that you think that people have some kind of problems, but when you go out and ask them and test them, you figure it out that they don't have these kind of problems you, you thought that they have, but but you figure it out and discover other problems who are very big and they don't know how, how to deal with it. And then you can, of course, offer them the, uh, the solutions which will really help them. And of course, if, if they really help them, these solutions help, help to your customers, they will be willing to buy them. So this step number two is very crucial and the most important step of all four. So you must go out and you must do the interviews. And I will explain you later, uh, very detailed, how, how, to, how to perform, how to design these interviews, how to design questions, and how to design uh, interviews and how many you must perform and everything we'll discuss later. So the step number three is refresh your business model and make a solution prototype. That means that uh, if I explain in that way, at first you are in your garage. At step one, you just build your first draft of your business model. Then you go out of your garage to ask your potential clients and to talk with them about their problems. And in the step three, you go back to your garage and at first you refresh your business model. That means that you put on the informations you gain in the market, in the interviews with your potential clients. This is the first sub step of step three. And uh, the, the other thing you should do, you, you make a prototype. So here you try to build your business idea. That means that uh, in step three, you are, you are uh, uh, designing your idea. You try to, to make what uh, you try to make prototype. That means that you try to make your business idea, which you will so sell to the people. So in step three, so you have two steps before, and then in step three, you try to make a prototype. And in step four, you go out and of course, test your prototype or test your solution. So you must test a solution also, but at first you must figure it out about the problem and based of the knowledge you gain through the, this um, analyzing problems, you, uh, you gain a lot of information and then you build your idea, your product, your service, and then you go out and test also your business idea. So this is a step four. And now we go, and now we, I will go backwards and I will explain you a little bit detailed every step. So if I summarize the step one, designing the first draft of business model, the step two, you go out from the old garage and performing uh, pro, uh, problem interviews with your potential clients. In step three, you go back to your garage, you refresh your business model, and then you make your prototype. And in step four, also go out from the garage and then uh, test your prototypes, test your idea. Okay, now we are in step one, designing the first draft of your business model. So like I said before, this is a one page, uh, one page business plan. And uh, it goes like this. You always start with the problem. You see on the left, left top corner is a problem. There you tr try to write down the problems you will solve. Like I said before, one of the golden rules is fall in love with the problems. Don't fall in love with your idea, with your solution. Fall in love with the problem. So in, the, in this section about the problem, you put down, you write down the top three problems you will solve to your potential customers. 
and uh, these just uh, just write down just three three problems not more because uh, more problems you have the longer will take you to this testing phase because you must test every problem so i think um, for the if you want to um, work efficiently three problems are more than enough of course there you have also a problem or maybe maybe you maybe you try to satisfy a need so maybe it's not a problem maybe it's a need sometimes it's a fear maybe your potential clients have some kind of fears they don't uh, have a courage to do something and you will help them so the fear the the need and the problem all goes in this section which is here with, with the number one marked with the number one and then you go to the number two this is the customer segment in this paragraph you you put down who are your customers who is your ideal customer i said not the customer segment but i said who is your ideal customer maybe the best way to come to to, to the to your uh, ideal customer is just to close your eyes and trying to to imagine the most satisfied the, the 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 customer which is most satisfied with your solution that means that you describe uh here the person you gave you gave him a name you gave him a age you gave him of course the the gender you gave him uh, what kind of uh, let's say um outfit what kind of hobbies if she uh, if this person have uh, if she lives uh, in the town or the village if she is very educated or not so you describe all of the details of your ideal customer i repeat again you just close your eyes and then try to imagine the customer which is the most satisfied with your solution and you describe detailed description here in paragraph two you put on the detailed description about your uh, ideal customer. So th this, this is the answer about the paragraph two. You just ask yourself, okay, at, fir at first I, um, I put down the problems, but who are the people who have these problems? Who are the people who have these needs? I will satisfy. Who have the problem? Who, who are the people who have these kind of problems? And then you try to, in your, in your mind, try to imagine the most typical person which have these problems and she or he will be the most happy when you will, when you will offer your solution to them. And you describe detail, like I said, gender, uh, age, uh, uh, status, uh, outfit, hobbies, uh, um, education everything you put down okay and this is the number two and this is the crucial the crucial point and in my workshops uh, uh, people have very difficulties with this number two because they have a feeling that their business idea will be for all so i will sell all i will sell my solution i will sell my business idea i will offer uh, my business idea to all to all slovenians to all all of people of the world but this is not how it goes, you know, because it's a lot of competence on the market. And if you will not find a very narrow, a very specific group of people, you won't succeed because the competition is too high and your, your competition, big companies will eat you for breakfast. So I think uh, this is the crucial point that you, that you find very narrow and very specific uh, group of people and you start with them. And please, in, in uh, section number two, you describe them. Okay, now we are number three. The section number three, you put down what, uh, what uh, why, let's say, the, the, you put down the answer of the question, why I am the best on the market. So this is unique value proposition. That means what you will offer, what you will offer to your customers that they will say, oh my God, wow, you are the best. I will buy from you. And this is very hard, you know, because of competition, because, because of we, we have everything and we can buy anything we want. Of course, it's very hard to find this kind of uh, uniqueness in our business idea. But I think somehow you, you must figure it out because if you don't have these, uh, these informations about 
why you are so unique on the market. The people will not buy from you because uh, uh, maybe they are buying from somewhere, someone else and they already trust the, your competitor. And of course, if you don't have very good statements, very good uh, arguments about your uniqueness, why you are better than all the competitors, I think you will not succeed and you, you will not persuade people to buy from you. So this is number three. Maybe, maybe, the, the, maybe I can help you a little bit with your information. Try to put down the answers in the, uh, like the answer for, to the question, so what? That means you can say, oh, we have these, uh, we, we sold these cups. And uh, then, then uh, uh, customers say, okay, so what? A lot of cups is on the market. Yeah, but these are made, let's say, in Slovenia. And then uh, customers say, so what? A lot of cups are made in Slovenia. And, and you say, yeah, but these are with uh, eco-friendly materials. And then, you, then the customers say, uh, so what? A lot of them are made from uh, eco-friendly materials. And then you say, yeah, but they are... Uh, made uh, with disadvantaged people made these cups and and so on and so on so these are these are the information these are the arguments about like answer about um so what so uh, let's say uh, in the number three you put down the the number the uh, you put down the uh, you put down the answers because this so what question will also uh, echo on your, in your mind of your customer. So what? I'm buying it already. So what? I don't need it. So what? I don't, need, I don't have time for this. And that means that you must be prepared with this kind of information where you will try to solve, solve the, the, uh, sell your products and services. And number four is meant to be the solution. In number four, you put down the top three features about your business idea. So, like I said before, don't fall in love in your ideas, fall in love in the problems you're trying to solve. And you see now, you have three different sections before the, your solution, before your business idea. So this is the, the, the core of lean innovation. You, you try to, to look on your business idea in a more spread, more, more, more wide uh, 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 let's say more wide um, look, and then uh, in number four you just describe your idea. Okay, I will I will make this kind of uh, cups for the tea, and these cups uh, have very unique, uh, let's say, very unique uh, pictures about uh, you have copper Ljubljana on it, and it's meant for tourists and stuff. So you just uh, in number four you describe your idea. Number five. In number five, you put down the unfair advantage. That means that, that you put down the things that cannot be easily copied or bought by your competitors. Because you must know that if you will do good and your idea will be successful, a lot of people will try to copy you. And of course, they, they will. Because the, the technology and the materials are, are quite easy to copy. So you must figure it out what are the kind of uh, fields that you possess, but they, th this is not very easily copied or bought. I think that the majority of entrepreneurs uh, write down here the co-workers, you know, because you can easily copy the material, you can easily copy the technology, the knowledge, but your co-workers, so, so the people you are working with, it's, it's, it's not easy to copy. Maybe they can steal you if they, they offer them the uh, better, better salaries and stuff. But uh, this is a very hard process. And I think this is the so, uh, people who are uh, uh, cooperating with you, I think, are the, mo the, the most valuable asset. And uh, they ca cannot be bought and copied. So this is, uh, of course, one thing it's certain that you put down the, the, your, your colleagues you are working with. But I, I hope that you will find some, something else also, um, some, some fields that cannot be easily copied or bought. Okay, and now we are number, uh, at number six. Number six is, uh, then here you put down the revenue streams. Let's say in number six, you figure it out 
how the money will flow to your company, in what ways you will earn the money. So um, uh, that means uh, that you explain a little bit about margin, uh, explain a little bit the, the payment, pay, payment process. Let's say if you, um, um, uh, you, if you will use the credit card also or just cash, uh, you explain maybe a little bit um, is it will go uh, you, you uh, or are you renting something or you will just retail something or you maybe some uh, or, or you will produce something so explain a little bit how the money will flow to your company and in number seven we are talking about the costs here we explain how the money will leave your company so in the number seven you explain the biggest costs you will have to perform this idea of course, uh, in majority of companies, the biggest cost is the cost of uh, uh, payment, of the cost of work. But uh, don't forget for other things. A lot of people here forget about the marketing. So I think at the first, at, at the start, the marketing expenses will be the highest of all the costs you will have in your company. I think that the cost for the marketing will be the highest and don't forget about it. And uh, of course, marketing also here includes the webs, the building website, uh, and of course the fa let's say if you will if you will use Facebook, Facebook promotion or uh, Google AdWords or um, uh, tickets for the different fairs. If you are more to business to business to business uh, section, maybe you will uh, maybe you will uh, um, uh, you will go to some fairs. Uh, like maybe abroad also in other countries. And of course, this, is, this costs a lot of money. So um, put all the costs uh, here in number seven. You don't need to figure it out ex exactly numbers because it's not time now that you calculate the numbers, how much you will spend. Maybe for the start is enough just to describe your biggest uh, costs. And uh, you, you don't waste time with, with the numbers because it will change a lot. And it's just a waste of time if you calculate now because your idea will change. And maybe it's uh, later, uh, uh, it's time that you also calculate your costs. So this is number seven. Number eight uh, is key metrics. Here you describe how you will measure your success. So what filters will you use that you will measure your success? A lot of people here just uh, uh, write down, I will measure my success through the sales. That means that uh, if, I'll say, if I sell uh, a lot of things, a lot of money will be on my account. And that, that means that I'm successful. If there is not a lot of money in my account, that means that I'm not successful. But the sales is just one filter. And uh, I suggest you that you that you de design more filters because the sales is um, in, in this, uh, let's say, customer journey, the path of your customer, the, the road of your customer is sales just in the end. So if you, if you will just look at your sales, you will see if you are good or not, but you will not know why you are good or, or why, why you are not performing so well. You will just see that sales is not good, but you will not know why. So maybe you put... Uh, you maybe you describe or maybe you design the road of your customer and you put different filters uh, on this road. Maybe you put one filter on your website like Google Analytics and then you measure a little bit how, ma how many people uh, is going uh, to your website, is checking your website. And then you maybe put another filter to, let's say, um, to when they create an account, if, let's say if you have the uh, uh, internet uh, store, um, uh, so you, if you are selling something on the internet, uh, the majority uh, internet uh, web stores have uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of process that you must create your account. And then creating account is another, is another, um, is another filter and then selling. And then you have three filters. And then you know how many people come and then you know how many of that they create your, their account and then how many, how many bought things. And then you have three different informations and then you figure it out. Okay, not a lot of pe people come on my, my web store, but majority, all of them, let's say, create an account and majority uh, buys 
uh, uh, my products. That means that uh, I have good products, I have good good web store, but we, I have very weak or very bad marketing because not a lot of people know about my website. So I must do a lot on the marketing. Or maybe you figure it out that a lot of people come, but um, like no one creates an account and no one sells that, uh, sorry, uh, no one buys your product. That means that you have very good marketing. A lot of people come to your website, but then you have maybe very um, user unfriendly website, or maybe your products are not good. And that is why you are not selling. So this is a completely different story. So I encourage you the, the, that you put more filters in this road of your customer. So this is number eight. Number nine, it's, uh, uh, this is the last one, and there is a channels. That means in that section, you describe your uh, commercial, your marketing strategy. So if you see the number two and the number three are connected with the number nine, that means, in other words, how customers, how my ideal customers will, um, will know about my unique value proposition, how they will know that I exist. So that means in channels, you describe your communication channels, your path, your road to customers. So that means here you describe um, which marketing strategies you will use that the people will know that you exist and a lot of people in my workshops they just write their facebook and then i ask them okay facebook but why and they say yeah because it's for free you know but this is not the right question is is it for free or not the right question is are my ideal customers use this channel and if you if you let's say sell some something to to the elderly people which are not using the facebook and the internet of course, the Facebook is not a good channel for them. Maybe they read newspapers and maybe they, they, um, they are in stores and buying food. And maybe you, you put their stand in these big shopping malls and try to co communicate with them there because the internet is not for them. And maybe Facebook, also, if you are trying to sell things to very young people, let's say 20 years old, I see now that the young people are not using Facebook anymore. They are, they are more using Snapchat. So if, you, if your ideal customer is a very young 20 year old girl or a boy, maybe the Snapchat is a real channel for you and not the Facebook. So the real question, the, the real question for that is, uh, if my channels are used by my ideal customers or not, and you start with that and don't start with I will just use this one because they are for free. Because it don't help you if they are for free. If, if your ideal customers don't use you, don't use these channels, of course, they will not know about your offer. They will not know that you exist. And of course, this is just a waste of time because also if the channels are for free, you will invest a lot of your time on these channels that you will, that you will succeed on, let's say, Facebook, maybe it's for free for the start, but you, you must invest a lot of time on Facebook that you post, uh, that you post uh, the, the, the real stuff, um, uh, that you comment to the others and stuff. So it's a, it's a time investment. So be careful and not just pick this one day for free, but ask yourself, is, uh, is these channels uh, uh, are used um, from my uh, ideal customers? And this is the step number one. I hope you understand me maybe about the questions you have just write down your questions and when i will finish i will uh, i will ask you to write to write your questions to the to the message box so for now if you have any question just write down your your answers and when i will finish with my presentation i will ask you uh, and invite you that you write your questions and i will try to answer it so this is about the step one. And now we are going to the step two, which is, uh, which is the most important step of all four steps. Like I said, in this step, we explore and analyze the problems uh, we are thinking or we are wishing that our customers have. Uh, and of course, exploring and analyzing problems 
is uh, is uh, made or is produced uh, or is performed by the um, by the special interviews we are doing with our potential clients and these interviews maybe some uh, background information these are interviews which takes around 15 minutes this is the the first information you you need to know so it's not very good interview because after 15 minutes of uh, in-depth interview I, i'll tell you people are quite exhausted so if you if you if you asking the right questions they are quite exhausted so 15 minutes is max this is the first thi thing maybe you also ask yourself how many interviews i should do i think you if you are business to customer so if you will offer your your services and your stuff uh, and your uh, uh, products to your customers not not other companies but customers um, I think you must perform at least 50, so five zero, 50 uh, interviews. I think this is the minimum, um, but I suggest you maybe you perform around 100 or let's say between 50 and 100 interviews. If you really want to get very good results, very good information, you need to perform between 50 and the, and the 100 interviews. So this is uh, information number two. Information number three, uh, maybe you have a question with whom? Who are the people that I do the interviews with? And of course, my, my, um, my uh, uh, answer is the people you describe here in the, your business model in the number two. So that means that you perform your uh, interviews with your ideal customers. That means that when you when you try to uh, to 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 do the first interview, you just take your phone and then go to your uh, addresser. The addresser, I think it's the right uh, imenik for a Slovene audience. And then you just go through your through, through your phone and just try to call person who is similar, who is the most similar to the person you described in paragraph number two. And this is your ideal customer, and this is the first, the first person you will do the, the interview, and then you go so on and go on and go on and go on, another, another, another. So that means that you perform interviews with your ideal customers. So not with anyone who have 15 minutes to talk to you, but just with the people who are very similar to the person you describe in your in in the section when you describe your ideal customer uh, okay these are three background informations and now i will explain you a little bit about how uh, how you approach or maybe how you design these questions which are included in the interview the every interview should have like like one introduction and then the core and then the let's say the ending so introduction, core ending. In introduction, of course, you you introduce yourself, tell you tell your name, and uh, I think that very important is that you tell people that you don't sell anything, and they 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 don't have to buy anything from you, because when you will start that you try to do something, they will they will think that this is the some kind of uh, commercial. And then they, they then you the you want to offer them something, and it, they, then in the end you will ask them if they want to buy. So in the introduction, it's very important that you you communicate with them in a way that that you say I don't sell anything, I I don't uh, force you to buy anything. Maybe you can you can say I I just attend some special uh, business school. And we are doing uh, uh, testing our ideas in some special problems, and it will be very great if you help me. And when people hear that that you are in the, some kind of education process, and th th let's say th that you are a student in some way, they are really uh, they they are willing to to um, to to help you with that, and they are willing to uh, talk to you and to make. Um, and to to put out the answers you are trying to ask them 
So uh, explain people that you are not selling anything and th that this is not commercial and that you are a student who perform a very innovative uh, way of testing business ideas. So this is the, the first thing you must explain in the introduction. And of course, tell a little bit about the subject, but not be, uh, don't be so uh, very much specific. You just tell them, uh, let's say, if you are testing uh, uh, a new yogurt, you don't say to them, I, I will uh, ask you some questions about the yogurt, but uh, you ask them, I will uh, ask you um, something about food you consume or maybe your uh, eating habits. We will talk a little bit about your eating habits. So don't tell people anything, everything, but just, um, just a little bit about the subject you will talk about with them. So this is for the introduction. And then in the core of interview, you design uh, questions in which you, of course, the first goal of, of the interview is that you try to figure it out. If people have these kind of problems, you put on your business model. That means that you ask, of course, in the core of your interview, you ask people, okay, Mr. Do you have uh, uh, problems like this? And then you, of course, um, mention the problems you put on your business model. And then you ask them, of course, uh, everything about this problem. How often do they have this problem? How big they, they feel that this problem is? How they satisfy, how they solve this problem now? Which solutions they are using now? And of course, the most important questions here are they satisfied or not? Or maybe with what kind of subjects they are, or, or features of this solution are satisfied and what features of these solutions are not satisfied with. And that means that when the people will tell you, okay, yeah, I have this kind of problem. Yeah, it's big. And uh, I try to find this and this and these solutions. And um, this is good. And this is very bad. And this is the questions this is the questions, or let's say this is the answers, this is informations which are very good for you because you will see how they react and how, how, how they, um, how they uh, manage these problems in their life. And of course, you will earn, a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you will learn a lot out of these questions. So the first goal is that you're trying to figure it out if there are problems like you design that there are. And of course, um, uh, also you, you, you um, try to figure it out how they are managing this, uh, how your potential clients managing these kind of problems right now, uh, because they don't use your, uh, uh, they don't use uh, your solution already. So this is the first goal. And you ask them about the problem, everything about the problem. How much, also maybe a good question is how much they spend in the monthly basis for these kind of solutions, like solutions from your competitors. So this is a very good question also. So how, how, how uh, often they use, how much they spend, uh, how, are they satisfied with the, with the solutions on the market, what they miss? Maybe a very good question here is also, did you ever um, did you ever uh, uh, trying to find some new solutions, but you didn't find it? And in this question, the answer of this question is maybe the base of you of your new new business ideas, because maybe you will figure it out that the people are uh, uh, searching for that kind of solutions, but nobody offers them, and this of course is very great. If you if you will if you will get this kind of informations uh, in these uh, interviews, okay. And this is the first part of the core interview. This is the first part with the goal that you're trying to test if there are really problems that you think they are. And uh, the other goal is that you try to analyze the the buying. Let's say, how can I say? the buying process or maybe the buying habit or your the, the buying habits 
about uh, of your uh, customers. And this is uh, this these informations you get if you ask them that they just imagine the the last time they bought something. Let's say, uh, dear sir, can you imagine the last time you bought the yogurt? And then he 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 come with his minds to the to the actual to the actual um, let's say to the actual picture him on the uh, in the supermarket buying the yogurt and then you ask them every everything about these processes so the questions are how you find about this yogurt it, it was co commercial uh, like in catalog or maybe some commercial in the store or maybe they have some um, people who have uh, their yogurts in the in the stands or how you how you get familiar with this kind of yogurt and then you ask them um, okay but when you come to the supermarket there were there was a lot of yogurts why you buy just this one why, why, why you buy just this one? Uh, even there was plenty of different yogurts. Why you buy just this one? And of course, then you ask them. Um, of course, then you ask them. Okay, and then, and then, what happens? Will uh, uh, um, what, were you satisfied, or w were you not satisfied? And what was the most uh, exciting and satisfying thing? And what was the the the, the worst thing that it happened? With this yogurt, and of course, this is this is all the uh, questions uh, in which the answers are the are the key informations in which you need if you if you try to to know the buying habits, if you try to know also the marketing, because people will tell you how they get familiar with some kind of yogurts, and then you when you will start performing your marketing, your commercials, you will know how to do it. Because people will tell you how, which, commu which marketing strategies or which marketing channels they are using. So this is, of course, very important questions. And this is the, 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 the second part. So the, fir the first part is about the problem. And the second part is the, the pa uh, part of, of the actual product of your competitors and all the questions around, around this uh, product. And um, these questions have one golden rule, and you you must you must not forget about this golden rule. I will tell you now. This is very important. You never ask people if questions, and you never ask people questions which are uh, which are, which have direction into the future, because we are always lying. If you if we are questioned about our future. We are always lie. We lie ourselves, and we lie also the people who are asking us. Let's say if you ask, if you want to start with a with a fitness studio, and if you will ask, uh, let's say your neighbors, uh, uh, dear Mister, will you exercise more uh, in in um, in six months? Every person will say yes. Let's say if you ask them, if you uh, will you buy more healthy food. In in next uh, six uh, months, every uh, person will tell you, "Yes, I will. I, I will uh, eat more healthy food. I will do a lot of exercise and stuff." So don't ask people about the future because we are not fortune tellers and we don't know how the future will be will be performed. So if you really want to to get a very uh, good uh, uh, information about your cost, uh, your customers, you always uh, ask them questions about the past, about the things that are already happened, because these are the really, the really good and important informations. So informations which are uh, based on the already happened events. And this is the golden rule of asking. Don't ask people about the future and don't ask people what if. These are forbidden questions. Always ask people about the past, about the reactions about, about their past, and ask them that they describe these kind of events and uh, feelings and thoughts they have on the past, not on the future. Okay, and this is about the core. The, the core interview is like that. 
And then we have uh, just uh, the finishing lines. Maybe uh, when you start to finish, finishing your uh, interview, it's very good uh, that you um, that the first question is, is uh, in the finishing line. You ca you ask your uh, uh, people who are interviewing if there are any subjects that you forgot to mention and they think that they are very important. And sometimes you will get here very good, uh, uh, very good um, ideas because people will tell you something they have in their mind and then you will say, oh my God, how, ca how, could, how could I forget this? So this is a very good question for, for, the, for, the, closing, for the closing. So if you have any other thing to say to you. And then you also ask them about, uh, uh, about things that you don't know, uh, let's say, how old they are. Maybe if you put down that uh, your ideal customer have, uh, let's say, four children, you ask them if they have any children. Maybe you ask them if they live on the, in the town or in the village, on, or maybe you ask them for the hobbies. Because don't forget, when you, when you perform interviews, of course, you are also checking out if your ideal customer is really your ideal customer. That means that the, the people who are sitting in front of you and you are making interviews with it, you must check if they suit to the, to the type of persons which you put down on your section number two, like customer segment or your ideal customer. So you are do, doing this uh, matching also. Are they familiar or are they similar to your ideal customer? And you, of course, asking them these kind of questions in which you, let's say, gender, you see if it is a man or a woman. Uh, maybe um, about outfit, you see it's a more business person or it's more sport person, or maybe it's, a, um, I don't know, uh, so, so, some things you can see, but the other you ask. And you ask here when you are closing down. So this is also one 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 uh, group of questions. And then you just ask uh, uh, the last question, and that is, do you know some person who is also interested in that field? And that means that you 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 now you are trying to expand your network because in some point you will uh, um, you will you will not have the numbers anymore of your friends who are similar to ideal customers. And you need other people who you don't know now. And of course, it's the best way, um, it's the best way to ask people who are you, you, who you are interviewing that they, if they are willing to help you and give contacts to, to their friends, they have, uh, also uh, these kind of field experiences. So of course you ask people if, if they know that kind of people and if they, uh, and you ask them if they can connect you with the, with the other, with their friends. And of course in that, this is the strategy you will expand your network uh, and you will, you will allow to do more interviews because you will, um, uh, get to know more people about this field, in this field, let's say. And that's it. This was the last question about the interview, in the interview, and this is, the, this is all about step two. So now we were talking about step two, how to explore and analyze the problem. And like I said before, this is the most important step of all four, okay? So now it's also time. If you have any additional questions about step two, maybe it's now a very good time to put it down. And then when will come time to answer the questions, I will, um, of course, I will, um, I will um, give you an answers. So, okay, this was about step two. Now we are heading to the step three. Like I said, refresh your business model is the first thing. Then uh, this is meant like this, you know, when you, when you, perform hundreds of interviews, of course, you will learn a lot from your ideal customers. And of course, your business model will change. Of course, it will change. It can't happen that it, I, I didn't met any person in my life that the, uh, the, the, the business model is not refreshed. You know, 
everything is changed. When you start to talk with your potential clients, everything is changed. So in step three, of course, the first thing is to refresh business model. And then based on all this knowledge and all this experience you gain through the interviewing people, then you make your prototype. So this is now it's now it's time that you make your prototype. It's, um, if it's a service, you can do you can design just your PowerPoint. And in PowerPoint, let's say maybe in 10 or 15 slides, you describe what you will do. You describe what you will offer to the people. So this you describe you you design your PowerPoint in in a way of selling PowerPoint. That means that uh, this PowerPoint can be used when you will sell your service to someone. And of course, everyone who who will try to uh, uh, to buy from you will want to know what is all about. And you can use this PowerPoint to persuade him that you are the best and they, they should buy from you. So that means if you, have a, uh, if you have a service, your prototype is a PowerPoint in which you describe your service. If you have the physical product, that means that you must do the first product. And in some cases, also, if you build just one product, it can be very expensive. So maybe for the step three, if, if, the, if the process of making your product, even if it's just one, is very expensive, maybe for the start, you just try to, to draw the picture of this, uh, of this uh, um, product in the 3D, 3D um, computer programs. So the, the, the programs can, uh, the programs can uh, allow you, so computer programs allow you to draw the 3D pictures of the, of the physical products. So maybe it's the, this is a good solution. So it's, it, maybe it's also for free or, or it's a very uh, little cost. You will just draw your, your physical product and don't make it one because it's, of course, it's, if it's expensive, uh it's it it could be a waste of uh, money so try with the 3d pictures and that is all about prototype you you try to to do the prototype in some cases maybe maybe design it from the wood or maybe from the plastic so uh, there you have you must be creative and think how how can you build a prototype with a very little money let's say and this is about the step three so when you are when you are finished with the building prototype, you are in the end of step three, and then we just go to the step four when you also test your prototype, and that means what that actually means. That means that you go, if it's possible, to the same people you went before when you test your pro, your pro, uh, when you test your problem, and of course introduce them your solution. So. The best way if that you go to the, the same people you make the problem interview with, but sometimes it's not impossible. But if it's not impossible, um, uh, if, if it's not impossible, that's it. You, you uh, try, try your best. But even if there are different people who are listening to your solution presentation, uh, I think it's, it's, not, it's not so, so bad. It's not so bad. But the, the best is if they're uh, the same people. And of course, um, when you uh, make, a, make a presentation of your solution, of your idea, of your offer, uh, it's, this is also like, like interview, let's say. And I will explain you now how to do it. At first, when you meet someone uh, to, to test your solution, at first, of course, um, uh, in, the uh, in the introduction, you introduce yourself, you tell the name of you, and you tell what you are doing. And, and of course, the golden uh, words are, I'm not selling you. This is just a test. So uh, you will help me a lot, and you will need to, you, we, we, you will don't need to buy it. So I will just test. And like I said, like, like I said before, the people will then will be um, happy to, to help you if they know that they will not have to buy. It. So I think in the introduction, you must explain to them. And then I think in two or three minutes, you actually uh, introduce the solution, the solution 
you tell them uh, what is all about, what are the great free, uh, features, you tell them about uh, um, value proposition, and you try to persuade, to persuade them that they are uh, uh, buying it. But no, not actually buying it, but maybe using it. So you, you put on the presentation, you put the best information about your projects uh, or let's say uh, uh, pr products, and um, uh, you try to, to, to persuade them that you are the best uh, and, and the solution or the product of you is the best on the market. And I think it should take you maybe for three minutes, two or three minutes, not more, because people are not uh, concentrated more than three or four minutes. And then you stop talking and just ask them two questions. The first question is, uh, how, what do you think about my product? So this is the feedback about the product. And the second question is, what do you think about my presentations? Let's say, if I, do you understand me? Did I tell something that you already know? Did I miss something? So I, I didn't tell you, but you, you are very, uh, you are wonder, uh, or you have questions about it. So these are, these are, these are the questions. And then you just allow them to talk. So I repeat again, you ask them, what do you think about my, pro uh, my product? And what do you think about my presentation? So you are asking them to give feedback about your product in the one level and on the other level about your presentation. And of course, this, all these informations are very, are very good for your business development because, um, uh, because they will tell you how how your customers see you, you know, because you are, the, you are an expert about your business and it often um, you use words or you tell uh, people something they don't understand. So, of course, it's very good to ask them if they understood you, if they uh, figure it out what it's all about. So you try to, to, to get feedback from them. And of course, one of feedbacks is also what they think about my product. It, uh, do you think it's cool? Do you think uh, it will sell? Do you think it will, it will be successful or not? And of course, people will tell you. If you ask them, people, people will tell you anything, everything and they will suggest you another features and they maybe will tell you this feature is uh, boring. I don't need this one. But if you include this and this and that, this, this will be very helpful to me and they will give you another ideas and you will be rebuilding your prototype and uh, designing and making it with them. And this is the, the core of Lean Innovation, like I said from in the start of this webinar, uh, that you make your products and services with your potential clients uh, and you include them in the very early stage of, uh, of project or, or maybe product development. And uh, you do that with the step four. Let, let's say we do all four steps and this uh, for step four in particular. And that's it. This is step four. And when you get this kind of feedback, I think you are, and then, okay, then you uh, include all these feedbacks in your prototype and uh, um, then you go with the massive production, let's say, or if you have services, then you start really selling and persuading people to buy. And I think if you if you will do these four steps, I think you will um, you will be not in these statistics that nine of ten businessmen uh, making and designing stuff that nobody wants because you will do the homework and you will um, design your products and services with your customers and um, they will uh, like like these customers more. And uh, the, of course, uh, as a result will be that they will buy from you because you will really help them and satisfy their needs and solve their problem and maybe destroy their fears, let's say. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is the, the information I, were, I was uh, planning to give you. So I suggest that now it's, uh, now it's time for questions, if you have any. Uh, Polona said that she's got to go and it, it was a great meeting. Okay, she said that. 
Anya Emayan, if you have any questions, now is the right time to type to type me questions, and I will try to uh, give you uh, I will try to give you the answers. If you don't have any questions, maybe you can just type me and say I don't have any questions, and I will really appreciate if you have uh, if you give me a little bit feedback about this webinar. Okay, everything was clear, so I have no further questions. Okay, Anya, uh, Anya, if you don't have any further questions, then I um, um, thank you that you participate on this webinar, and I hope to see you again. Uh, Jan, thank you for the nice tips. I have to go now. Jan, thank you for being part of it. Thanks. Okay, Anya, all the best. Thank you, all the best to you, and I have uh, and I wish you a lot of uh, luck and uh, uh, fortune in your uh, business way. Let's say. Emma, do you have any questions? It looks that Emma don't have any questions, so uh, see you. Bye-bye.